All right, so the following question has to do with additive genes, but this time we're not going to do a regular parent F1 or F2 cross. We're going to cross the F1 back to their parents. Now, reading the question, it says that assume that three independently segregating equally and additively contributing pairs of alleles. It says three pairs of alleles right here, three pairs of alleles, which means you have six alleles total. And I'm going to call them big A, little a, big B, little b, and then big C, little c, right? And they say that they control flower length in nasturtiums. Now, a completely homozygous plant with 10 millimeter flowers, now, is crossed with a completely homozygous plant with 30 millimeter flowers. I'm going to assume that the 10 millimeter flower, right, is going to be completely homozygous for the recessive genes. That's how I'm going to depict it, right? And I'm going to say that the 30 millimeter flower is going to be totally homozygous for the dominant alleles, right? Now, the F1 plants all have flowers about 20 millimeters long. Now, that means that when we're 20 millimeters long, we're going to be heterozygous at all the alleles, right? Big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, right? Or how does I get all the genes? Now, the F2 plants show a range of lengths from 10 to 30 millimeters. So when we cross this F1 generation right here, we get an F2 generation that ranges from 10 to 30, right? Which would make sense because we can get a range of totally homozygous for one to totally homozygous the other and heterozygous all in between, right? And with about 1 64th of the F2 having 10 millimeter flowers and 1 64th having 30 millimeter flowers. And that makes sense because you have a one fourth chance of being homozygous for one type of, for one gene, right? So if you're homozygous recessive, it's one fourth and one fourth and one fourth that adds up to one, that multiplies to one sixty fourth. And that makes perfect sense. Now, what distribution of flower length would you expect to see in the offspring of a cross between the F1 plant and the 30 millimeter plant? Now notice this, the F1 plant, right, is heterozygous for all of them, right? And the, F, and the parent plant that is 30 millimeters is homozygous dominant. Now, before we even do any of this cross, we want to see how much does each allele contribute to the length. Now, the parent length right here ha is 30 millimeters in one and 10 millimeters in the other. So the difference between the two is 20, right? So 20 millimeter difference. Now, this 20 millimeter difference is divided by six alleles total, right? Because you can be all uh, lowercase or all capital uh, capital letter, right? And so there's six alleles total that are contributing to this length. And so we get around 3.3 .3 millimeters per capital letter or per dominant allele. And so when we do this cross right here of our apparent to F1, we notice one thing. All of them, all of the offspring have to have at least one big A allele, at least one big B allele, and at least one big C allele, right? They always have to have at least one. Because why? Because the genotypes of a heterozygote to a homozygous dominant, the genotypes of the offspring is either homozygous dominant or heterozygote. And so there's always at least one big A allele. And so we know that the base height of all the offspring is going to be at least 20 millimeters, right? Because remember, our header our heterozygote F1 generation had three capital letters. And so if our F if our F2 generation, or rather F3, whatever this is, since they have three capital letters, they have to have at least 20 millimeters. And so what we want to figure out is what is their second allele? Is it going to be homozygous? Uh, is it going to be a recessive or is it going to be a dominant allele? And so we have three different positions, right? So we have three different positions where we might have a capital letter for dominant allele or a lowercase letter. And so what we do is do a binomial expansion, right? So if we do a binomial expansion for either a capital letter or a lowercase letter, and we have three different positions, the coefficients that would give us the uh, for the probabilities is one, three, three, and one, right? We have one way of organizing three capital letters at once. We have three ways of organizing two capital letters and one lowercase letter three ways of organizing two lowercase letters and one capital, and one way of having all lowercase letters, right? And since these add up to eight, we have a one eighth chance of this, one eight, one eight, three eighths chance of that, and so on and so forth, right? Now, we have a base height of 20 millimeters, like we said, for all our offspring. Now, there's a one eighth chance of adding 10 millimeters to it because we have three capital letters. And so let me recolor this right here we have a one an eighth chance of adding 10 millimeters to our base height, right? Because we have all capital letters. Now there's three eighths chance of having two capital letters at any of these positions, right? And so that would give us around 6.6 .6 millimeters. A three eighths chance of having one capital letter, so 3.3, .3, and then 
we have a 1 8 chance of having no capital letters, so adding 0 to the height. And so for our offspring, we're going to get four different possibilities. We have our 30 millimeter plants, that's going to be 1 8 chance. We have our 26.6 millimeter, that's going to be a 3 8 chance. We're going to have our 23.3 millimeter, right? That's going to be another 3 8 chance. And then finally, our another one of our smallest chances, which is, is 20 millimeters. That's going to be a 1 8 chance. And so this is what happens when you basically cross an F1 generation to the parent generation with additive genes. What we're going to be looking at is basically how many positions are going to be organized in multiple different ways and how many positions we know are going to be remain the same. And so this is different from when you do the F1 generation to get the F2, where all six allelic positions can be organized in any pair ways.